Whilst it's powerful to hear about breast cancer from doctors, it's also powerful to hear about it from somebody who's been through it. Earlier, I sat down with Joe Knight, who's a breast cancer survivor and now a campaigner. And I want all of you to hear her story too. Hi Jo. Hi Harry. <laughs> so lovely to meet you. Thank you. So you are breast cancer survivor, I mum, yep. campaigner, mm -hmm. absolute inspiration. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, what I'd like to do first of all is just ask where are you at the moment on your breast cancer journey? Okay. I'm five years this year, cancer free. Um, yeah, I was diagnosed back in 2017. Okay, so congratulations. Thank you. That's yeah, it's a huge kind news. of milestone to hit within the cancer world. It's, you know, five years free, so it's amazing. But I imagine that five years has been, well, I mean, you tell me, people describe it as a journey often. How would you describe yeah, that? Yeah, it's five a journey. Years? It's a real roller coaster mm. of emotions, physically, mentally. Um, it really is. It's just a whirlwind. I don't know where those, the last five years have kind of gone, really. Yeah, yeah, they've sort of just whizzed you by. It really has. It really has from sort of the start to now. It's like, in the, in the distance, you know, where did that five years go? Well, can we go right back to the mm. start? So how did you first identify that there was something wrong? So obviously I always checked my breasts regularly, probably not as often as I should, maybe every other month. Um, okay. And I found a lump right. that was, I wasn't sure of. I'd had a breast reduction six years prior. So I just assumed it was fatty tissue. Yeah. Didn't think anything of it. It left it for a bit. Then I checked again and thought, not quite right. I'll go and get it checked out. So at that point, I then phoned and got a doctor's appointment to Thank see goodness. how things up. Yeah, if I hadn't have done, I think my story could have been a very different one. Do you? I might not have been sat here now. You just, yeah. you know, you don't know. Well, that's the importance, isn't it, of, of self-checking? And you said maybe you didn't do it every month, mm -hmm. but but you did it, didn't you? Which is the main thing, yeah. you, were, you were checking. Exactly, exactly, and that is so, so important. So how quickly did you see your doctor and how quickly did you how, how did things progress I think because I've mentioned on the phone to the receptionist look I found a lump I need to see the doctor I'm not sure what it is I was in within that week okay. um, there was an appointment available and the doctor she wasn't sure herself obviously not being a, a breast expert she said there is a lump I'm not sure what it is but I will refer you you know don't be alarmed yeah. I'm gonna put you through on the rapid access uh, which you'll see within two weeks I was seen within ten days um, yeah, so I wasn't too overly concerned at that point because it was the unknown. I didn't know what it was. And that's the message that I always give to my patients. You know, if you're, not con if you're concerned about something, if there's something there and we're not sure, we need to get you seen within that two-week period. That's because what you guys are there for. More often than not, it's not a breast cancer, but if it is, then it's so important. Early that detection is key. Absolutely. So how did things progress? How, how quickly? You said you were seen within 10 days yep. at the specialist breast cancer unit. Yeah, at my hospital, yeah. And then what happened? So on that day, I was seen by the consultant. He did an examination. Obviously, they must have an inkling there and then because it was a bit like a one-stop shop for me. So yeah. I saw the consultant. I then had a mammogram. From there on, I then had a biopsy on the same day. And after the biopsy, saw the consultant again. Again, obviously, he'd seen the imaging couldn't say anything because there had to be a few more tests the biopsies had to go off and then I was seen back with him within must have been within two weeks at right. least so it was right. really quick so I guess within a month then is it within, yeah for me finish. it was within a month yeah so which was great and I think within a month if people aren't checking or you know sometimes people might delay for more than a month just thinking oh you know just see if it goes away but it's really I important. think that's what I hoped you know I delayed yeah. it a little bit not a lot but I think I was hoping it's nothing it'll be okay but I'm glad I went when I did yeah so then your treatment started what treatment did you pretty have? soon I had to have because of the nature of the lump where it was I had to have chemotherapy first so six right. months of chemo then a mastectomy uh, then radiotherapy and then because my cancer was hormone related I had to have a full hysterectomy as well right so okay. been through the mill you have, <laughs> you have and tell me a little bit about your family uh, I'm a single parent uh, to a 15 year old daughter so she was eight at the time when I was oh, diagnosed um, yeah and mum and dad sister brother breast yeah. cancer isn't in the family history right um, prostate cancer my dad had prostate cancer but he's in remission now which is great um, so how does that everything that you've been through how does that impact you or how did it impact you but also how did it impact your daughter yeah it's, it's hard isn't it because your world just comes you're told uh, you know I'm really sorry you have cancer you, you just you become numb your world comes crashing around and you just panic and for me I'm an, I'm an incredibly positive person I always have been but my fear initially was everybody else not yeah. me it was yeah. how are my parents gonna cope how's my daughter gonna cope am I gonna die mm. that's your initial reaction do you think um, most people think that when they hear the word cancer do you think 
most people, without a doubt, yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to die. Mm. And, and that's what the, the scary thing is. And I think until you know exactly what you're dealing with and you get your head around it and the diagnosis, and the worst thing that people do is go home and they'll Google it. Yeah. Do not Google uh, you know your diagnosis and yeah. it's the hardest thing not well, to do hard. it's really hard it's really you hard feel that you because need that you get so much negativity mm -hmm. and i think exactly until you know what you're dealing with and you're i didn't know there were different types of breast cancer i just thought there was breast cancer that was it but there's so many different grades so many different types of breast cancer that are treated in different ways and was yours um were you told that yours was a particularly aggressive form of breast cancer or were you given those statistics that I think sometimes people want you know what yeah. are the chances of survival etc yeah it is hard isn't it because you want to know yeah am I going to die what's mm -hmm. my life you know that's the question I guess. My that's prognosis. what people want to know but it, I'm scared to kind of ask that but yeah. because mine was a a grade two if my consultant said if I'd left it any longer it would have been that next step next right. further slightly different treatment yeah. it wasn't as aggressive as others yeah so in that respect I was lucky if lucky is a word you use when you've got cancer yeah. um, but to me I was lucky I'd gone early enough and but you had to like you say through the mill with the treatment chemotherapy yeah, literally chemotherapy surgery, surgery to remove your, you know hysterectomy yeah. as well so that yeah know. so my cancer was estrogen receptive right and did you have your ovaries removed as well yeah full hysterectomy so that's instantly into menopause as well surgical menopause yeah so not easy. Yes, no, not easy. And hence, I think that's been, um, my hair hasn't grown back properly. So people mm -hmm. may be thinking, why has she still wearing a headscarf? Why she's yeah. not got a lot of hair? Yeah. That's probably, my hair hasn't grown back properly. I kind of expect a full head of hair after five years. So, so, so but now you're at this five year mm. point, five years cancer free, yep. that is a massive milestone. Because yeah. that's like, you know, you can now think about moving on with the rest of yeah, your life. moving forward. How do you feel about the rest of your life now? positive yeah I can't be any other way and when you're going through treatment you're at the hospitals you're seeing your nurses you're seeing the specialists it's like the, you've got a comfort blanket yeah um, and you're seeing somebody all the time when you finish your treatment and you'll see bye off you go your treatments finished now that's when the scary thoughts come in you've lost that that comfort blanket you're yeah. not seeing anybody regularly yeah. and that's when the kind of fear comes in of reoccurrence yeah yeah. And interesting that you decided to not have reconstructive surgery. Can yeah. I ask you about that? Yeah, um, because when I finished my treatment after radiotherapy, uh, I was left for a year with having um, having had a double mastectomy, so living with no breasts. Yeah. Um, I kind of got used to it. Um, I think I decided not to, I just didn't want any more surgery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, having had a breast reduction, um, then going to having nothing, I just, I felt comfortable in my own skin and my body and I want other women to understand and to be happy with who they are and that boobs don't define you as a woman. Absolutely not. They I don't agree. define, they didn't define me and I just want to promote body positivity and it is okay to remain flat and I want that to be an option for other women who are going through, because you automatically think you're going to have reconstruction. Yeah. And do they talk to you about reconstruction as if, you know, it's, it's, what's gonna what is what's gonna happen it's not talked about massively mm. at the time of the appointment I think yeah. it's just initially all your treatment you're gonna have and I just assumed that I would have reconstruction immediate reconstruction with my surgery yeah but because I had to have radiotherapy afterwards yeah. they wanted my to heal properly um, before if I decided to have reconstruction and it's a huge surgery yeah well your positivity is um, contagious it's amazing I think the Thank body you. positivity your positivity of mind it's amazing what would be the one message you want you would want to share with other people is just to not be scared of your body check yourselves regularly yeah. and early detection is key and it's all about educating for me the younger generation my daughter's 15 so it's so important for me to educate her and the younger generation not to scare them but to know their body not to be scared to, to touch your body to feel it to to know your normal it's so so important that once a month us women are checking and and men too because yeah. men get breast cancer too yeah and it's important we do it in front of our children don't we you know we brush our teeth in front of our children so important and this is no different it's so just part of self-care not to be embarrassed about your body yeah. we're all different it's your body it's my body it's your <laughs> body yeah. yeah be proud of who you are yeah 
exactly well thank you so much for sharing your radiance and positivity oh, thank you for having me with us but also hopefully for inspiring lots of people out there I to, hope so. to check themselves yeah. look after themselves and you know people you're not alone yeah there are hundreds of women men out there who have been diagnosed if you are struggling get help and just if you find a lump get it checked joe thank you so much for sharing I think it's so important, as Joe said, that we're checking regularly and if we find anything we're concerned about, we act on it straight away.